Thank you very much for that great uh, introduction. First of all, I would like to say how happy I am today to be speaking to all of you. Open government is a project that the Quebec government has been working on for a number of years. And if I may, I would like to give you a brief recap of what we have done to get to where we are today. And after that, I will speak more specifically about the role open data play for the Quebec government. So first of all, a few years ago in 2018, the Quebec government unfortunately made a first attempt um, that was not, that did not uh, necessarily yield results. But as our moderator said, failure is always an option. And that was the case for us. We continued um, to work and we uh, maintained our desire to have this open government. So we um, created the site, uh, a website in order to facilitate access to open data and to provide a platform for open data to all of our uh, citizens. And a number of things contributed to its success, including the fact that uh, the cities of uh, Montreal and the city of Quebec, right from the get-go, were partners with us. They wanted to work towards an open government which is a government that is closer to its citizens and a government that is more transparent. So we made a second attempt and that did yield more results. That was in 2020, so last year. And now the government of Quebec is officially um, a member of the group of open governments. And a bill was adopted in June. And that made it official that we would be progressing on open data. And it made this uh, an obligation for the government and a legal responsibility. So open data really is a, tw a 20th century issue for the government of Quebec. Before I start talking about digital transformation, I want to say that it's first and foremost about transparency. Yes, I am the minister responsible for privacy, but I'm also the minister responsible for access to information. And for me, open data, well, people often ask me what we can do about access to information. And to me, the best answer is open data because open data is very clear. It's... Uh, very easy. There is nothing better than that. Open data gives its citizens access to information that does not come with any risks for their private information. And that's the other file that I'm responsible for. So as a minister, I think that we need to have these two aspects. These are two things that we need to think about. Yes, we think about it very often, and internationally, we know about many cases of stolen data, but it does not mean that we do not have, that there are no advantages to open data, and we should continue advocating for better access to information. We also need to have transparency from governments. And this is why partnerships are important, because an open government is a transparent government. Now let's talk about digital transformation. When data is accessible and structured, so when it follows some standards, when that happens, it means that civil society can also use that data for the benefit of people. 
there can be tons of applications for multiple types of topics. So it would be as if the government of Quebec would allow its citizens, its creators, and its people to create useful, useful information. And the government can also intervene and invest massively. But there are other things. So there are other examples. For example, we can look at traffic in some cities. We can look at services like parking. We can see how to make things accessible. So all of that data makes it so that creators and innovators can create applications that will benefit society. And since the data is open and accessible, we can do it cheaply. And that's for the benefit of our citizens. The government can also look at how it manages access to information requests. The government of Quebec has a framework that they use when, when people ask for information. When there is a request, there is an administrative process. It means that people who are looking for information can obtain answers. Therefore, the government of Quebec has 30 days, for example, to respond to some access to information requests. The government determines whether this is information that they can share. They can determine if it's sensitive information. They can determine if it's private information. And therefore, they can respond to the citizens they can collect the information, structure it, and communicate it. It means that the process can be quite burdensome and can also be expensive. Open data, what does it do? Open data makes this information accessible. It makes it easy for citizens to have access to the information. People can just go on the website, look for the information, and from there, they can use it, they can consult it, they can communicate it, they can share it, and the information is free to access. That infrastructure, the, infra the previous infrastructure that we had becomes, becomes moot, and the process becomes easier. So... It helps us to save money, it helps us to save time, and for citizens, there is no wait. So they don't have to ask a question and wait for an answer. They can just go straight to the website and extract the information that they're looking for, and they can do it at a time that is convenient for them. So they don't have to comply with business hours for a specific office. No, the website is open 24-7, and citizens can go and access the information and they have access to a wider range of information within a single request. It means that the government of Quebec can encourage the development of applications by different innovators and creators and by small businesses. But this new way of working also means that the government is able to make the information easily accessible, cheaply, and without having an infrastructure that the government itself needs to support. Essentially, it's also a matter of transparency. All true democracies need to have more transparency. All democracies need to make information as accessible as possible, because that information, according to, well, yes, privacy is important, but at the end of the day, the information belongs to citizens. And this is why Quebec's government 
wants to reduce the number of data management centers, we are implementing a new policy to have open data by default. It means that information goes through a risk analysis. And if at the end of the analysis, we determine that transmitting the information would not cause any harm, then by default, that information will have to be open. The goal is to significantly increase the number of or the data sets that are accessible to citizens. And it would come with all the benefits and advantages that I mentioned earlier. When information is accessible and when diverse information is accessible, then people will find the information that they are looking for and there won't need to be a structure to manage these access to information requests. People will be able to access the information that they need in an easier way. This is a measure that we are implementing after passing a bill earlier this year. It is not just an objective, now it's an obligation. It's legally mandatory and the government needs to comply with that. This is how we are hoping to have open data. I believe that this meets a need for the 21st century and that it increases the government's efficiency. Therefore, Quebec's government is working towards having open data by default. Now, if you have any questions, I will gladly answer them. Okay, we are going to check the chat. I do not see any questions at the moment, but there are three different levels. Okay, so no questions yet. That was a great presentation, Mr. Kier, and I'm very happy to hear that Quebec's government is moving in that direction and that they're doing this for all Quebecers. So thank you very much. So I don't think there are any questions for you at the moment. I know that your time is very important, but I do have a question if you are willing to answer it. Yes, of course, go ahead. So for a few years now, you've been a member of the Open Government Partnership. Can you tell us how that helped the government to accelerate the conversation and to move the needle? How did it help your discussions with people and with communities? Did that relationship help you at all? Yes, absolutely. It helped and it accelerated the discussion. And that's why we added that obligation to the law. And now this community for open government is tightly knit. We want to have more open data. We want to have international standards on how to structure the data. We want to have specific policies. Our policy is to have open data by default, and that's a policy that we copied from the Open Government Partnership. So these are all measures that we have imported from that partnership, and now we are applying it within Quebec's government. And that's how we ended up with the obligations that we have added to the law last spring. So yes, there was this partnership had a lot of influence on our decision. I have a question here. It's from Jean-Noël Landry. He is going to be one of our keynote speakers tomorrow. He works on open data across the government and across the world, actually. So his question is about integrating open data. Oops, something moved. So yes, his, so he's interested in how open data helped to manage the COVID crisis and 
how it melded with the COVID crisis. Well, yes, absolutely. And in a certain way, we are using it more and more. We are doing it to gather statistics. We're using it to keep track of the testing. We are keeping information about what's happening in hospital settings. So there are tons of information that we can collect through open data that the Department of Health can also use. But I think that you've said it well yourself. Yes, we're talking about healthcare, but there can always be a thin boundary between open data and protecting privacy. In Quebec itself, and I don't want to start a new debate, but in Quebec, multiple laws exist to protect healthcare data. According to these laws, we determine that some data is falls under personal healthcare data and is therefore excluded from inquiries. Christian Dubé, the health minister, has already talked about the changes that he wants to make. Yes, there is some reform. Yes, we need to protect personal data, but we also should not skip analyses because the data falls under personal data. Therefore, that information would not be widely distributed. I'm not going to go super uh, far into this because my colleague Christian Dubé is the expert, but we understand the dynamic and we've, we hit a certain wall and we understood that maybe our laws don't give the full leeway that we would like to have when it comes to personal data. Do you have time for one more question or do you have to leave? Okay, so this is going to be the last question. The question comes from Eric Hanley. Data about personal data. How do you manage risk related to sensitive information? How do you make sure that they don't end up in public data sets? That's an excellent question, and I am going to take a quick example. Police forces have highly sensitive information. Therefore, in March 2020, Quebec adopted its very first cybersecurity policy. According to that policy, the level of protection for an information system needs to be proportional to the value of the data. So what we're doing is something that's never been done before. We are making a full inventory of the data. We are going to, well, we are making the same evaluations at the Canadian level and internationally. Quebec has, we're not making this up from scratch, but we are going to use that approach as a filter. And if we determine that the data is sensitive and that it could cause serious harm, and if we determine that there is a risk for privacy, then we are going to use the appropriate protection measures. So that information would only be kept in the government's data sets and it would never be made public. But we also need to consider how data, how we're going to deal with data that is considered open by default. How do we determine what can and cannot be included in those data sets? It means that we have to carefully analyze every single information because we know that not everything can be made public. Our, ref our reflex at the Canadian government was to keep everything hidden by default, but now we have to change things and we need to prove that things can be open by default. 
So now we are changing our approach and we are going to make things open by default. And now if we want to keep something hidden, then there is a burden of proof. We need to show that it could cause serious harm. So I don't know what how to say it in French, but in English it's open by default. Yes, so in French it's the same formulation, ouvert par défaut. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mr. Kier. Thank you for your time today and thank you for all of your efforts within the government of Quebec. And I'm very happy that Quebec's government and the province participated in this event today. And we know that they're working hard on something that's very good. We're going to have a gala very soon. Yes, I also want to congratulate the city of Montreal for their innovation and their the fact that they are vanguards. And this is very good for the government of Quebec as well. Yes, they are number one. Thank you very much, Mr. Kerr, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.